Almost. That's what I like. Almost being here. I mean, I meant one of those uh, well, like Star Trek movies where they just bring me in and bring me out. Bring me in, bring me out. It's good to be here. I praise the Lord for it. Um, we've got some good things to talk about tonight and also some things that's not good. But uh, Joe, uh, we put it on the Facebook. Jolie got uh, good reports from her hearing test and she's hearing out of that ear. And uh, they first said that she might uh, might need a, a hearing aid but for some mild hearing. Then they went back and checked all the results and everything's good in that ear. So I praise the Lord for that. So if you've been praying for her, then God's answering your prayer. And then uh, Dana, just a while ago, got to come home. Uh, Linda texted me and said they were almost home. So uh, uh, be much in prayer. They, they doctored him for pneumonia. And then, uh, 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 of course, they've got him on, still on antibiotics. So be much in prayer about that and pray for them and pray for her mother. And uh, my neighbor, uh, Janice Gorham, got, she got to come home or a little bit ago, to my knowledge. She's been in the hospital now for a week or so. So pray for them. Uh, our Joanne's cousin, which is my cousin uh, by marriage, I have to, I have to, I have to accept you, Sonia, if you're listening. Sonia has had another surgery. Uh, the port uh, stopped up where they done that down in her arm just this past week. Could not, dialysis could not go, could work. And uh, so they give her a surgery this morning and move from this one side of her chest to the other. And she got to have dialysis. This is the first time she's had dialysis in well over a week. So uh, still was doing a lot of bleeding. So let's pray for her. Pray the Lord to touch and help. Let's keep praying for Wade. Wade said he's still having some pain, and so let's keep praying for him. Nance is out with sick tonight, so let's we'll send that program out to her. She's watching, and uh, also uh, Jenna Rose still doing good. Our our our, our youngest addition there, Heather's baby. Uh, did you ever tell me the baby's name? Charles, Charles Chance. Chance. Charles Chance. Chance. Okay. I and your buddy and Oh, okay. Uh, buddies, Charles and Ricky was just a chance, wasn't it? No, that's Charles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Ricky, uh, Ricky put a, a, a great post on, I, I got to read this week, and uh, we got to make comment, and then there was one guy on there, of course, that was contradicting, that didn't, didn't believe in the rapture. I, I don't care if they don't believe in the rapture. That ain't going to keep me here. They can line up from here out to the road and say they ain't a rapture. That don't, I ain't going to stay here to accommodate them, are y'all? I'm, I'm going to leave. Uh, so let's keep praying for all the sick and afflicted and uh, keep praying for Melissa's husband uh, with his cancer. Uh, pray the Lord to touch there. And all these other requests that we've been given, uh, pray. And I want you to keep praying for Israel and pray that the Lord would touch. And uh, God is moving Israel and uh, they are taking back uh, things, but that's not going to restore the life, but it's maybe it's going to keep others from uh, losing their life. That, uh, and let me say this before I tell you, uh, you know, they found uh, 40 babies that had their heads cut off. And they say the way these people do this is they take the child and they cut the child's head off in front of the parents and then they kill the parents. Now I'm going to say this, and y'all don't have to go along with me. Don't even clap uh, at Facebook. The people out there ain't going to tell me what they think. I have no sympathy for those kind of people. I have no sympathy for this bunch that's rioting in our streets uh, protesting for the Palestinians. Uh, I, I, I have no sympathy. Only God can have sympathy, and he does. And God will say a friend of mine, I, 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 I can't I find sympathy for that. And you say, well, you should. Well, I can't. Uh, if you if you kill a baby in front of me, you, you're going to get everything I've got. Uh, amen. Uh, so uh, uh, do pray. Not to mention all that went on, how they, they captured these 
uh, young people and how they raped and killed and raped and killed and, and, and laugh about it and take and put yourself on camera like they're a movie star or something. They ain't nothing but a demonic death. And I'm going to say that uh, if it goes all the way to Washington, I'm going to say that here tonight. And, setting, uh, children and setting children on fire. I haven't seen that one. But ain't that something today? And uh, then you got, and all it is is these people that have come in, these terrorists that have come in. Uh, a friend of mine been allowed to come in our country. Now they've set up groups and uh, they want to uh, petition and protest uh, in favor of what's going on. Well, I'm not protesting in favor of it. I'm standing against it. Are y'all standing against it? May God bless and God help us today. Uh, I like to see people get saved. God will save those folk. Uh, amen. But until they are saved, friend of mine, I hate the sin. I, I don't hate the sinner. I hate the sin. I, I hate what they've done. Well, how about you? Amen. So let's pray the Lord to touch and help. And there'll be a lot of people out there negative about what I've said, but I really don't care. Uh, you know, amen. Uh, if, what would you do if it was your child? What would you do if it was your family? You know, there's Americans that's in hostage over there. And, amen. While that bunch of we've got to first having barbecue parties. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm just telling the truth. Amen. amen. And, and hostage uh, that will probably lose their lives. And I, I don't know about you, but that's sickening to me. That, that turns my stomach. So, but we need to pray. Uh, you know, remember the Six Day War and how God intervened for Israel in the Six Day War and how that it was said from some of the top officials of, of Israel's enemies, how that when they went to attack certain places that they saw the, a vision of angels and it scared them. And you say, well, I don't believe that. Don't care whether you do or not. These were top officials that said they saw it and they were afraid to go on into the territory. God still got his hand, folks. I, I'm going to tell you something. Whether you believe it or not, Jerusalem will be where God sets up or Jesus sets up his millennial reign. They will be, a, will be a temple built over there. And they will be worshipped uh, over there. And in the middle of this three and a half or seven year tribulation and three and a half years, the devil will try or will set up an idol and he will be worshipped for a little while, but it's all going to come tumbling down. How do I know the word of God tells me? I'm not stating this on Washington Post or, or NBC or not. I'm, I'm just standing on what God says. If God said it, how many of y'all believe it will be? Amen. All right. We got lots of prayer requests on our church page and uh, for prayer. So let's pray for every one of them. All right? Unspoken, raise your hand. Any spoken on your heart? Remember Junior Queen. He just let me back. Junior Queen? Yes. Name sounds familiar to me. All right? Anyone else? Leon has to go tomorrow to get his neck checked out and see if, if, if he's got blockages or, or if they've come back. And so you be much in prayer about that. Pray, uh, we're praying that the Lord gives him a good report and uh, pray for all of these needs. All right, nothing else? Wayne, would you ask the blessing, please? Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the many blessings. Thank you for this church. Yes, God bless tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Amen. Amen. So the guys will be going to the rest home tomorrow night unless something changes, and I know they'd welcome anybody who would like to go with them, right? Uh, how about 365? I might try to be with my <laughs> Give y'all a minute to get there. Y'all out there yet? Are we here yet? If there's not a friend like the Lord.
that. Amen. Amen. They're not a friend like the, uh, of the Lord of Jesus. Amen. What about 351? 351. Thing that says uh, B flat, but I don't think I'll be doing it in B flat. <laughs>
Wayne does need a crutch. Bless his little old heart. Amen. All right. I appreciate these guys going to go down to the, to the rest home and be a blessing to the people. And, uh, you know, that's the only church a lot of them ever get. They don't, they don't get carried to church. Their family don't go get them to carry them to church. So uh, I thank God for these ministry. Don't y'all? Amen. Amen. If you can't go with them, pray for them. But don't make no excuse. If you can go, get up and go, okay? All right. Go ahead, guys. Oh, 
your mother, the sisters and brothers will be there, and the stories let on just as we go on and we will. All the people the call, the light man.
I don't think Al ever sang but two songs, did he? And uh, that was one, and I think he uh, he tried he tried one day at a time every now and then, and, uh, because that was I think that was the song that uh, they did uh, uh, when they got married, wasn't it? Yep. One day at a time, and uh, uh, you might say, well, what? Why would you do that song at a wedding? Why, why not? <laughs> anyway, uh, if you've been if you you've been married, you know it is just one day at a time, don't you? And we, we all struggle as we go down this life, and we have a lot going on. And uh, but we just praise the Lord. All right, uh, I, I don't know. I, I do this song uh, quite often, but uh, I, I don't know. It's been on my heart today, uh, and uh, I found myself humming it a little bit. Uh, uh, about the church and how uh, the church is not what it used to be. And it's not. It's not what it used to be. Uh, there was a time when things like what's going on in Israel was going on. And, you know, we, we can't say that it's just going to stay over there. Uh, there was a time when there was a threat of wars that the churches would have been packed out with people praying. Amen. They'd been standing room only in the house of God. But where are they at now? You know, uh, when a, a friend of mine, Desert Storm, was going on and uh, there for a few days, they, people would go into church. The church doors was open. They were bringing their Bibles. You've seen them making them, uh, showing them on the TV. And then after they got to watching it and, and fight the war on their television, they quit going to church. And where's people at today? I'll tell you, we're living in a time when so many people have just forgotten God's house. So you pray for us as we try to do it today. We once there was church on fire for the Lord. Church is free in one mind.
there like it used to be. But you know, just because people choose not to serve the Lord, that doesn't mean that we don't have to serve Him or that we shouldn't serve Him, does it? Just because other people don't want to stand on the Word doesn't mean that we shouldn't stand on the Word, should we? Amen. All right, let's do this and we'll speed it just a little bit up and then turn it over to Joseph. And maybe everybody can yawn in the midst of this and wake up, right? Amen. Some of you look like you need baptized in coffee. You say, I don't drink coffee. Well, you're exactly the ones I'm talking about, right? <laughs> opportunity as always to stand and be able to uh, share what the Lord has laid on my heart. We're going to be going into 1 Samuel chapter 17. These scriptures are spoke on a lot. I'm just 
glad to do it, my Lord has laid me, I laid on my heart to do. But before we get started in it, I do uh, like to go into the Lord in prayer and ask whatever the Lord has for each one of us in this service that we'll get. Let's pray. Lord, we come before thank you as long as we know how. So thank you for letting your grace and your mercy. Thank this you, God, me, Lord, to uh, be here assembled together. Lord, we're here to honor you. God, we Lord, we're here to, to, here to see you high and lifted up because you're worthy. God, we ask forgiveness of our sins, our shortcomings, Lord, for we do fail often. So without your grace and your mercy, without your help, we couldn't make it through. So, Lord, we just ask that you touch us and forgive us and that there be no hindrance in the move of your spirit here tonight. God, for we want in all things to be humble. Lord, we want to, Lord, receive. See what it is you have us for each and every one of us here tonight. I pray that you would work on a, uh, such a sweet personal basis with everyone, both gathered here and those who are watching uh, there on Facebook and those that will watch later on where they may see. And in all things, may you be honored and high lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel 17, 31 is where we're going to be starting at, okay? It says, when the words were heard, which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight, uh, to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Y'all can be seated. It's interesting that uh, Kenneth, when he was talking about this, and this is what the Lord had laid on my heart uh, to bring in the play, the, uh, into the message, in the, in, in the play in the message this evening. You know, often we preach and we teach on uh, young David here. Uh, what David does in the rest of this chapter is truly amazing when you truly consider what has been said. You know, at his age, he has more courage than the well-seasoned soldiers and men of war that were gathered here. Uh, you know, uh, how old was David? When you first take a look at verse 33, uh, what's it say there? Uh, What's verse 33 say, Kenneth? He is a youth. What does verse 42 say? Wayne? Uh, I ain't rushing He was a youth. What else? And ruddy. And? And a fair countenance. Yep. Yeah. He was a youth, ruddy, which means fair, and uh, they, they say I try to say like freckled face is what some people try to say, but and a fair countenance meant he was, uh, he didn't look like a soldier, he was very pleasant to look upon, he wasn't somebody that was rough and tough, okay? Now, what about in 55 through 58? Um, how about you, Ashley? What, does they, what do they call him in 55 through 58? I called her on the spot. Mm -hmm. Huh? 55 and? Yeah, through 58. Just those three, those verses, they're what, they, they call him a few things in those verses. Are they describing? Mm -hmm. A youth, yeah. What else? Um, they call him something starts with an S. Yep. A strapling. 
And then what's the last thing that they call him? Young man. So when you're looking at all these, he's evidently young, okay? Most scholars believe when they've done the, the history going back uh, of his time being as king and, and his time in Hebron and, and how they figured it up, they figure him to be somewhere around 15 years old. They say you, there's no way to count it exactly, but they say somewhere around 15 years old. Now, because of customs uh, uh, and things, uh, to be a normal armor bearer, he would have needed to be 20. And they talk about how David became an armor bearer is what most historians talk about. But they said that he became one at a younger age. And, but anyway, can you imagine that? Go back and think about the verses that we just read here in the beginning. A 13 to a 15 year old going up and going against the lion. Has anybody here ever seen a lion close up and personal? I mean, in a zoo or something. Have you ever seen a lion? You have, y'all have. They're huge. I've never seen a small lion. I've seen them big. You know, they may look like they're this big walking to and fro, but could you imagine when they stand up? Think about that. This young man standing against the lion. Has anybody here seen a bear close up? Yeah. Yeah. You know, according to uh, the type of animals that's in the area that has been, it, the, the, the main type of bear that would have been around there is what's called a Syrian brown bear, is what the man calls it. They said on its paws that it would be in length between four and a half to five foot long, crawling around. Well, how tall would he be when he stood up? Making at least six, seven foot tall. And over 500 pounds would be the average size of these bears. So you think of a young child, a teenager, going up such beasts as this. Can you imagine that? This would have, uh, uh, you know, uh, a young man fighting these animals would not have been easy. You know, in fact, many would have considered victory for David quite impossible. Y'all know that? How scarcely would two or three go to attack a bear? They're trying to get the lamb back or a lion. But for one to go against both of these creatures, they would have considered it impossible. Uh, you know, and even more so as you look at Goliath being a warrior that was going to be attacking with skillful moves and not just as a wild beast. They would have considered David's feet with Goliath Quite impossible. But you know, there's something that most people are missing. And David admits something that most people overlook. In 1 Samuel 17 and 37, David says something. He says something important. Ken, if you want to read it. The whole verse. Yep, the whole verse of 37. It says, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Who delivered him out of the paw of the lion? Who delivered him out of the paw of the bear? Who did David say would deliver him out of the hand of the Philistine? David did not waver in what he was saying at all. He said that it is the Lord who did it and it is the Lord who will do it. So David wasn't claiming these victories in himself, was he? He didn't claim he was doing them alone. Amen. What did David say to Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47? Somebody want to tackle reading that one? Anybody? Liz, go ahead. 45 through 47. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comes to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air, 
and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Amen. Amen. So, what is David automatically doing as he goes against Goliath? David's already claimed victory. But he didn't claim it in his own name, did he? He claimed it in the name of who? The Lord. Now the devil, the Philistine, Goliath, sat there and he mocked him. Tried to run him down. Tried to make him doubt. Did it make David waver? He said, no, he says, God's going to deliver you in my hand. I'm going to cut your head off. He says, I'm going to defeat you. In the name of the Lord, the battle, he automatically says the battle is the Lord's. And in the end, he says, uh, that it, he says, uh, and this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. He will give you into our hands. What a statement. What wisdom, what what courage to be able to stand in the midst of this adversity, in the midst of this evil man who wants to destroy Israel, who wants to slay the people. Think about it. At first glance, victory seems impossible to those looking on. I mean, here's little David, who's a teen, going up against a giant of a man. A giant of a man. A big old guy. They would have thought he could have just went up and been pecking on him like a little child beating against the parent. Right? You know, there's a lot of people that were probably scared for David's life as he went out. Don't you think his brother said, oh my goodness, what are we going to tell Dad? Because his brother done got on to him. For one to see the battle as he came. What do you think they was going? Well, don't you think that some of them were scared from that poor little David? That poor little David. There's just ain't no way that he can make it through this. There's no way possible. They don't gave up on faith, I imagine. Because they didn't have the courage to go out there and face him themselves. How many of you are facing giants in your life and you're too scared to get up off your rear end and go and face him and you're waiting on somebody else to come back around and face your giant for you? Huh? There ain't always going to be a David right. to come around and face your battle for you. Sometimes you've got to rise up and take hold of the faith and hold on to God's hand and say, the battle's not mine, Lord, I give it to you. Let's go. Amen. That's what David did. He did not let their lack of faith destroy his faith because he was certain of God who could make the impossible possible. Amen. Right? Serving a God who can make the impossible possible. Do you still believe that is true? Do you still believe that we are serving a God who can make the impossible possible? Amen. Amen. I mean, do you believe it down in your soul? Do you believe it down in your heart? Without a doubt, you know that when it seems like there's no way, with God there still is. Amen. 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 Uh, God is not just present in part of our life. You all know that? God's not just present uh, just when we're sick. He's not the God who can make impossible things possible when we're down and we're sick looking for a healing. He's the God who can make the impossible things possible when we're facing the enemy. When we've got a battle going on, He still can bring the victory because He is that God. Amen. 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 There's countless uh, testimonials throughout the Bible of how God had shown His compassion and how God had shown His mercy. How about the winner is there, Pat? What about him? Y'all remember? Mm -hmm. What happened? There was famine, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. What was going on? What happens in a famine? Hunger, no food. People were suffering. People were starving because they had sinned against God is what the main problem was about. But in the midst of all this, there's a lady that's praying and looking for answers and God hears her prayer. And he's seeing. Who does he see? Elijah. Elijah. 
And what does God do for her? He gives her food. He gives her oil. He don't ever promise that it's going to be overflowing, but he promises that it ain't going to run out. Right? Liz, there were other widows. The Bible tells us there were other widows. But God sent Elijah into this one. How about that? What about when Israel's army, when, when Joshua and them were going forth and, and fighting? Moses was going forth and fighting. The times that God told them if they would be faithful, that he would go forth and fight for them. Y'all remember that? He sent hell out of heaven uh, stones. And, and he made uh, mountains to crumble. He made the chariot wheels fall out of the, the chariots of Pharaoh. He parted the Red Sea. He parted, parted the Jordan River. These are things that would be impossible. We don't have the power to do these things. You go out there and tell the Jordans apart and see what happens. But the God that we serve made the impossible possible. He rose people from the dead. Raised them from the dead. Why did he cured, cured leprosy? Which there's still no cure for today. He took a man's hand that was withered and made it whole again. He made the people that were born blind to be able to see. He made those that were sick and bowed over that couldn't stand up able to stand up and walk. Don't tell me that we don't have a God who is all powerful. Don't tell me that we don't have a God who has victory in His hand. Don't tell me that He came when I know good and well by His Word that He can and that He will. Amen. But the fact of the matter is we have to put a little effort in and that's what people are failing. They just expect God to just cater to them and pamper them and just give them whatever they want. They don't want to have to put no faith into it. They don't want to have to believe. They just want it's like a child. They never think that their parents are going to tell them no when they're asking for something. Mom, can I have a sandwich? No, you cannot. I'm not going to give you one. Can I have something to drink? No, absolutely not. You can't. They don't expect the parents to say that, right? You just automatically assume it should be given. And that's the way you're treating God. God, is, God has blessed us so much. He has gave us so much. He has not let us feel the suffering that is going to be coming. He's pampered us. And we've gotten complacent. But I'm here to tell you that you need to start exercising your faith and realize that we still serve a God who can. Amen. Amen. You know, I was watching some of that stuff that Daddy's talking about. And the news keeps on talking about how small Israel is compared to Iran and the others around. And, and, and uh, it talks about how the Palestinians in China had already been making arrangements with each other. The Communist Chinese Party before all this. And again, they keep on talking about how little Israel is. I'm here to tell you that it don't matter how little she is. God said that uh, a, a, a hundred or a thousand put ten thousand in flight. Ain't that what it was? God don't ain't concerned about numbers. God is the God that can regardless. If he chose to do it for one, he could conquer the whole world for the one. And he will. All this evil that's going on, people are letting go on. Do you think, not, do you think that, that it's exempt from coming here? They've been welcoming these psychopathic idiots. That's what they are. All these uh, radical Islamists are psychopaths, brainwashed, Idiots who are conceived or are, are, are brainwashing the thinking that such evil is good. Mm -hmm. They've been welcomed across our borders by the hundreds of thousands. They've been coming up from Mexico, especially over the last few years, because they've been freely letting them run. Don't you think that they're going to start doing the same thing here? Did you not notice that sex trafficking picked up? That people started disappearing left and right. Why? Because you're letting these people in here. Right. That do it, you ought to be ashamed. People that are for this, you ought to be ashamed. Amen. 
Do you see that they're beheading children over there? Do you not think that they would start it over here? Sure. Have you not heard it already on uh, Friday the 13th? They're planning something big. The Muslims are planning something big this week. They're putting out warnings in the big cities to watch out for what, what's going to happen. Is something going to happen? I don't know. So why are you bringing this in? It may take destruction like that for people to look back and see that God can deliver them from. They've been too open and they said, well, there's nothing we can do. They refuse to stand up and trust God and stand for what's right. If the people in the Bible had refused to stand, had refused to fight, then bless God, none of us would be here by now. Right. Amen. If there was no warriors that had no faith, if there was nobody that trusted the God that could make the impossible possible. Amen. But there were warriors. There were people who chose to fight. There were people who carried the faith, who went through the darkest hours, and they believed in what God can do. Darkness is coming. Do y'all still believe that God can help us do it? Sure. <laughs> what if we start getting attacked on every hand? We've been hearing things, and you, y'all, y'all gonna think I'm crazy with it. But this is true news reports. This ain't some crazy sci-fi stuff I'm gonna tell you. They're talking about a warfare that, that, that's being developed across seas. To be able to control your mind. To be able to end the war by making you fear without ever having to fire a bullet. To make you be able to become submissive. Chinese have been working on it, putting billions of dollars in it a year. And we know about it. My philosophy is, why haven't we blown that to smithereens? If that, there's no good that can come out of that. Why have we just let it go on? Why have we not tried to stop it? Well, that'd be an act of war. Well, I'd rather declare an act of war that could stop what they're wanting to do than to let them build it and have mass control over people. You say it's impossible, is it? No, they're developing other things here in America to be able to read your thoughts. You say, oh, they can't do that. No, they're developing things. And they say, oh, it's so we can read them in factories so if there's an accident, we can really know what the person was thinking when there was an accident. They can put you on trial for what you're thinking because you might have committed a murder. Because you can be, the only thing that you've got is your thoughts that are yours. And they're trying to take those away. You say that's impossible. Why would they create such a thing, Wayne? Control. Control, but why else? You're right. That's a good answer. Power. Power. Who needs this power? Huh? Politicians. The devil. Daddy's right. Politicians are one and the same. Uh, but anyway, why would the devil need that power to be able to read your thoughts through technology? Because he's not omnipotent like God. The devil only knows what you allow him to know. He can't read your thoughts. He can try what he knows has worked to make you tempt, to tempt you. So the devil would have to create some kind of technology to try to make him mimic to be like God. And don't think that they wouldn't use that kind of garbage. They say, oh, you're getting out there. Don't think that they wouldn't use that kind of technology and set up an idol that can talk and read your thoughts. Right? Don't think they wouldn't do that. They're already doing they using AI. That's what all this uh, arguing has been with the Hollywood actors. They're using AI and using fake bodies and putting these people's face on the thing and doing the movies without the actors and making it look like it's them. Amen. You say, oh, it sounds like something out of a sci-fi book. It does. But if you want to get down and uh, honest about it, it sounds something satanic and we're headed in a dark way. And the only way that we're going to be able to make it through it is through God. And if you give up on it before you even get started, then you are doomed. Amen. Because we are serving a God that is all powerful still. I'm praying for that God uh, protect Israel and defend her against all the enemies. I'm praying for a revival in this country. I'm praying for people to turn their hearts to God. But it looks like more and more people are turning away and don't even believe that there is a God. That don't change that he exists, Wayne. And just because people don't want to accept him for who he is don't mean that he's not coming. 
And it don't mean that they won't have to face the judgment. Amen. Say that's impossible. He's a God that makes the impossible possible. Amen. People that want to say that, that God's not God, that Jesus ain't God. You know, that's a, that's a philosophy that goes around. Some of these uh, new preachers are preaching that Jesus and God can't be God because Jesus was standing at the right hand of the Father when Stephen looked at the heavens and saw him. But when you study it, the Bible says that the three of them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they agree and are one. What are we made out of? The body? What else? Soul. What else? Spirit. We're three parts, but we're one. Right? We're three parts, but we're one. You only see the body. You don't see the rest. Jesus, Father, Spirit. Jesus became flesh. God is a spirit is what the Bible tells us, right? And those that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and truth. And then the Holy Spirit, the three parts. So they are separate. You can separate these three. The, it talks about the word being sharper than two-edged sword. It talks about how it can uh, uh, split it apart, right? You can separate the three when it comes time. But our body can't live without the soul, right? But with God, all things are possible. Right? There are three. And he is the God who can do all things. You know, as you look at the Bible, there's things that today people say it just couldn't happen. They spent years trying to misprove the word of God. You know what they've come up with after billions of dollars? You know what they keep coming up with? Well, something happened. We can't explain it, but something happened. I can explain it. The Bible tells you. Amen. Right? Well, we just don't think it happened in that year. We don't think it happened here. Well, you wasn't there, so you don't know. Right? Well, we just don't understand. They're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. We just don't understand. That don't make any sense. And then they all of a sudden, they, they said it couldn't happen. And then they find the remnants of it. It did happen. How many of y'all still believe that what the Bible says happened, happened? Amen. Amen. Do you really? Amen. You really believe that what the Bible said happened, happened? Amen. Okay. Do you really believe what the Bible says is going to happen? It's going to happen. Amen. I mean, honestly. The Bible teaches us that there's going to be a great calling away. When you study that, and don't use those words, don't use the word rapture. But it is a rapture, which a rapture is a calling away. There's actually, if you want to get technical about it, there's more than one rapture described in the Bible throughout time when people were called away. Jesus read when Jesus resurrected and those that if they had rose and were seen in the streets, that's one of them that they consider. But there's going to come a time when we're going to hear, uh, as John did, I believe, we're going to hear shout, we're going to hear the words come up hither. We're going to be gone. Amen. Amen. We've been promised that he's coming to get us, Ron. That even the angels, the men in white apparel said, why are you men of God, you men of God, leave my stand, you gazing into the heavens for the same way you see him go, that he's going to come like man, if I ain't word for word. But he's coming back the same way he left. Do y'all believe that? Amen. The Bible says that those that are dead, he's going to bring with him when he comes. Yes. Do y'all believe that? Amen. So do you think they're laying over there in some grave asleep? No. No. What did Jesus tell the thief on the cross? Did he say in a thousand years, you'll be me in paradise? Mm -hmm. He said today. He didn't say a thousand years from now. He said today. Right? What a God we serve. So well, we just don't understand. You know some things you just ain't made to understand. You know what? Sometimes we spend too much time thinking on things that we don't understand. But really it don't matter. God expects us to have some of it and take it on faith. Right? 
Because his ways are higher than our ways. He knows things that we don't know. Right. He knows things that we couldn't comprehend even if he told us. They've still been trying to comprehend how the, how the body works and how babies are, are formed and all that stuff. And in all God's great wisdom, they can't even begin to scratch the surface of the truth of the whole situation. Amen. Because we serve a God that makes the impossible things possible. I don't know what's coming on tomorrow, but I do believe we're going to have to stand up. You say, do you support fighting when the enemy is as evil as it is? Yes, I do. When the cause is just? Yes, I do. I believe that by laying down and not doing nothing, you allow the enemy to advance and get a foothold and kill more than they should. That's right. If people would have stood up in the beginning, there wouldn't be as much of a problem now. Right? If people would stand up and do something instead of just talking. If people would stand up in faith and pray and ask God to touch, He would. I don't know what you need in your life. I don't know what you face day to day, but God does. And there's not a battle. There's not a thing that you need. There's not anything that you face that He don't understand that He can't help with. That's right. I don't care if it's working on your car. I don't care if it's your job. Uh, that you, you've you got going on. I don't care if it's a family problem, if it's child sickness, or what it is. God works in all situations. Amen. He is the ultimate friend. And He is there and wants to lend His assistance. But you've got to ask Him. You've got to want it. We live a much more completed life when we trust God and ask Him for His help. Lord, can we just go ahead and say, Lord, it's yours. Just show me how to do it. I, I, I'm doing it for you. Amen. So often we just want to do it for me. For I. Have you ever noticed that? The harder the battle gets. The, uh, you know, when the devil's coming against you and your family, the harder the battle gets, the more it turns from we, talking about you and the Lord, to you start saying, me and I. I, 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 me, me, me. When you catch yourself doing that, you got to go back and say, Lord, but I am alone. It's us. It's we. When you get to the I and the me part, you take God out of the picture and you're fighting the battle alone. He never intended you to do that. You say that I failed him and I, I've been seek his forgiveness and he loves you. I've said many times, you've not caught God off guard. Y'all believe that? If you failed, you've sinned, you've let God down, you said, I want you to understand something. You've never caught God off guard. God knows exactly what you was going to go when you did it. You say, but, 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 there's no buts. He already knew it was going to happen. Now, pray to him. Tell him you're sorry, cling to him and believe and get up and stop belly aching in yourself, sorrow, and trust God. Because he's still there. Still working. Still helping. You say, oh, that's a means I'm saying it to myself as much as I am to anybody. We've got to get beyond ourselves and hold on to God and trust him because he is the God that can make the impossible possible. There's been many a times at the job I just didn't know how in the world I was going to get it and then God could make, make me understand that quick something I didn't understand or see something that I didn't say. Well, man, that's a lot easier. I should have been doing that for the whole time just when I prayed and I gave it to him. You say you should pray for him, John. We do. I do. I pray that God touch today and that he touches jobs. But sometimes still the devil will make you angry when you're out there working and you're hurting and you're getting hot and you start uh, getting weak. You say, God don't care about those things that you face. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. God cares when you're talking to somebody in the store about what you're talking about. You say, no, he don't. Yes, he does. He's there. He hears it. And he knows if you're not if you're saying something that you shouldn't be saying. God knows what you're thinking when you're around other people. God knows the lust that's in your heart when you're around other people. If you're attracted to them when you know you shouldn't be. God knows those things. God knows every time you lie to somebody. God knows every time you lie to yourself. 
-hmm. It's impossible. No, but God can, can and he does. He knows. You want to have a truer relationship with God, you've got to start putting God in his, pl in his place in your life. Up here. And trust him to be the God who makes the impossible possible. Amen. A message ain't long this evening. It's to the point. God led me to that. And he wouldn't let me get away from it. He is the God who makes the impossible possible. There's nothing that he can't do. Y'all believe that? Amen. The Bible says with man it's impossible, but with God, what? All things are possible. Things are possible. Right? Let us pray. Lord, we come before you as humbly as we know how. And I'm thankful for these words that you have sent, Lord, for the message. And I just pray that you'd just draw us into you and that you'd help us be to have to lead our souls. God, just help us draw strength, help us draw encouragement, especially, Lord, as the days progress and the times and the days grow more easy. Help us always remember, Lord, that, that we're not alone, that you stand with us. And as long as we trust in you and listen to you, you will help us to be victorious. God, help us be what you would have us to be. Help us do what you would have us to do. Guide our footsteps. Guide our heart. Guide our words. Help us get over ourselves and hold on to you. Help us believe more in you than we do in ourselves. God, and give it to you. Because you are more than able. Be with us. Deal with those lost hearts that might be watching. Let them realize that they don't have to stay bound by their depression. They don't have to stay bound by their sins. Though man would condemn them continually. You are the one that can break their chains. You are the ones that can break their addiction. You are the one that can change their life. So God, we're asking that you would do that. Lord, that you would help people see how much they need you. Use us, Lord. Use our mouths. Use our arms and our legs. Lord, to bless your name everywhere we go, God. And we just give you the praise, the honor, and the glory here this evening. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We 
Asking God to make uh, the the fix what's wrong, to forgive me for my sins, make me whole. Because you don't know what's going to happen when you go out there. Amen. Amen. And I'd much rather be facing them with God at my side. Amen. And oftentimes in my front, many times carry me. Then trying to face those battles alone. Amen. 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 I love y'all. Thank you for coming. Like they said, Lord willing, we will be having the rest home service. They said we was, but you never know what could happen in a, in a day's time. So y'all just pray that I know they're looking forward to us coming. Uh, and uh, y'all also uh, remember all these needs we've been asked to pray about. Keep the people in your prayers in Israel. The things going on. Uh, there's a lot going on over there, and I just keep them in your prayers. Amen. That's not asking much out of you. Pray for them. And not just there, all around the world where they're suffering. We love y'all. Lord willing, we'll be back on here at 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. We'll go ahead and say bye to Facebook. I know Elias is ready.